Let's go. You are now listening to Stability Podcast. Yeah, let's get started. Welcome to Stability Podcast. This is presented by Deep Brown Special. Oh, Dragosh is on. I'm excited. Yeah. What's the podcast name one more time? Stability Podcast. Fuck stability. That's ironic because I'm fucking mentally unstable. (laughs) (laughs) I don't have any stability at all like at this point like it is what it is i chose the topic resilience for today was i know like how much experience like both of us kind of have with resilience and especially in the past year or so yeah which topic do we want to open up (laughs) let's start with just an introduction like who are you or what do you study where are you how'd you get to come here studying here uh well dragosh is my name uh at u of m for mechanical engineering in my fucking sixth year, which is way too many years if you count, if, I, if I'm being honest, but whatever. Uh, what brought me to mechanical engineering is honestly, the immigrant dream was real in my family to be a doctor at first. And I was like, yeah, you know, not a bad dream, but let me get a useful degree beforehand just in case, you know, you don't get in, which fair enough, like not a lot of people get in. So I was like, fuck it, let me get an engineering degree and decided to get this and then technically the goal was to go to med school but now i'm like yeah fuck that (laughs) med school is way too much work and especially after engineering i'm not willing to do another like six years so yeah kind of in mechanical engineering and seeing that i like it and sticking through with it that's really it okay that's awesome uh so how so far that you've been doing mechanical engineering what's your like like if someone came up to you and was like i want to be an engineer what would you tell them I'm doing. I actually tell everyone that I know to get a engineering degree. I tell friends that I have even in uh, different departments that are <laughs> they don't really like like microbiology and stuff like that. I'm like, hey, switch to engineering. You could at least get a job. Like, <laughs> yeah. like Paul says, it's at least a guaranteed profession. You know what I mean? There's three real professions, which is doctor, law, and engineering. So, and accounting. And accounting. Accounting is considered one of the old professions. I think there's seven. Is there seven or four? There's there's four different like you know those ancient professions, yeah. like people talk about, like the what would you call it? That's why we have Google here, huh? Call it accounting. Or no, is it the ancient ancient yeah, profession? I say what are the oldest profession? Olded professional professions, because not everyone is called a professional, right? Realistically. True. Never really at wow. never Good. Really. It's old- prostitution. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> the oldest. Okay, prostitution oft- often termed the world's oldest profession as an in both the feminist work frame uh, work frame that was for women and labor. What? Only-, only fans. It's not new. It's <laughs> what? No way. Okay. So there. So there's- Did you know the oldest artifact I ever found, or one of the oldest artifacts, is a phallus, which is a dildo. Yeah, That's one of the oldest. Well not the, well, not the oldest, oldest, but like with fair validity, it's just like, yeah, here's a dildo. Okay. Uh, today's topic is resilience, yeah. and we're just kind of we're just kind of talking about the fact that like as being immigrants, we've had we've noticed in our lives the the resilience that our parents have gone through to be able to be somewhat successful in this country. Let's talk about that. Actually, that's a good question because I was like, like, your parents went through a lot. Yeah. I mean, I was even going to say, it's like, do you ever stop and think about how life would be different if you never moved to Canada? Yeah. Like. I have dreams about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of scary. Like, I am very happy that I came to Canada because I see the life and stuff like that. And it's just like, fuck. Like, it's it's a hard life back home. And it's like, even the school's not accredited. Like, imagine you go to university and you do all this work just for you to, like, not really be able to get a job. And, like, with a Canadian degree and... Like accreditation, like you can go anywhere. We can go to the states and work. There's a lot of job opportunities, a lot of job opportunities all across Canada. But me coming from Moldova, it's like if I lived there and had a job there and a degree, it's a disaster. You also have to come here and then have to get everything accredited again. Right. Like the amount of people that I know that are doctors and stuff like that had to go through the process again. It's just right. fuck. A lot of people never get their like doctor ed. Like I know so many people that do medicine outside of the country, come back and they are taxi drivers in like Ontario. 
<laughs> be, like i remember my, my buddy was in toronto and he was sitting in a cab and he was talking to the cab driver he's like yeah he looked like kind of young like 30s and he's like yeah i'm a heart surgeon or he's like wow what are you trying to back in my country i am heart surgeon here i am taxi driver yeah it is trade <laughs> it's, it's crazy the fact that you can go from being this man who controls people's lives in your, the palm of your hand to a man also controlling people's lives in a car, but like in a totally different aspect. Like there's respect. Like not yeah. saying that tax drivers don't deserve respect, but in in our country, especially back home in Pakistan, a heart surgeon is treated as a king. A taxi driver anywhere in the world is treated as a taxi driver. Sadly, <laughs> well, it is what it is. Yeah, it's of as cutting open someone and fixing their heart, which is yeah, that's wild. It's it's a common story. You a lot of people and. For you, how different would your life be if you were back home? If you were back home. I, I was the, like, I think, I think I was like getting to when I was younger. I was very. I wasn't the smartest kid, yeah. like academically, uh -huh. and I still I'm not. But what it is is that like I think back home I'd be a hustler. Like, I think yeah, I would have yeah. been a hustler, like, tr just trying to make uh, make end meet or, like, trying to figure things out. Like, or I would have been a wasted person, like, just a waste of, waste of space. Because, like, I know cousins back home were living, and, like, we didn't come from a super wealthy family. And, like, I knew my grades wouldn't keep up with, like, maybe they would have gotten better, but I don't know. But, like, especially when I was younger, I was like, I think I was failing, like, preschool. Like, I think I was looking at my marks, and I had, like, uh, F and everything in, like, preschool. And I think my mom was telling me, she's like, yeah, we're concerned for you. She said, you spend all your time up on the roof flying kites. I might be like, kite master, I don't know. But, like, maybe a uh, kite runner would have been written after me. <laughs> the Pakistan kite rider. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, don't, I, I think I would have been a hustler. I think I would have done anything to make ends meet or to make some kind of money. I think I might have left. But I don't think I would have left the country because it would cost too much on my parents. I don't think I could have let my parents do something like that. And it would have, it would have completely, I don't know what my family dynamic would have been like because we were living in like one house with all our cousins and everything. And I think it would have been very different. And We don't talk about that either because it's like coming here and having no family. It's different. It's very weird. Like, I see, like, my friends, and they have, like, oh, I'm going to my cousins, X, Y, and Z. And it's, like, part of me is, like, shit, that sounds kind of fun. You know, you have so much family to hang out with. Right. And the other part, though, I'm also, like, fuck, it's so nice because there's no family drama. Right. <laughs> like, you'll hear them be, like, oh, my cousin Ricky did this. My cousin Johnny did that. I'm just, like, fuck, tough. <laughs> we'll find you a wife from back home in Pakistan. <laughs> oh, it'd be a first cousin. I hope not. Like... <laughs> I, I think your uncle Rashid will find you something, my boy. <laughs> He's already got something lined up for you. Uncle Rashid, <laughs> I know these names, bro. Where you get like popping out these like uh, uh, brown people names? You have a lot of brown friends. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That's so funny. That I grew up as a white kid around all Muslim kids. Yeah, it's, when, it, when you come a uh, astaghfirullah, like, oh, this is how, how people say that. It's so funny because I'm like, wow, it's become such a cultural thing. Like my friends are fighting over who gets to convert me. Really? Are they going to? I don't know. I, life will decide. That's like I'm not converting any time in the next like ten years for sure. When you're, do, do you think if you're dying, you would like have faith in God? Do you think if you're, like in I your? Have faith in God. No, like I mean, like do you think like you know the you know what they say to like tra uh, convert people? Like they'll say La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Do you think like at, on your deathbed you might just say it just for yeah. maybe might just say it just for yeah. maybe? I was even thinking closer, like fifty. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, like just in case. Like, do you ever, like, like... I think about that all the time, because, yeah. like, uh, yeah. Because <laughs> I grew up Orthodox Christian. Right. Yeah, Orthodox Christian, and it's, like, it's very, like, strict. It's right. similar to, like... Yeah, yeah. it's very similar, because out of... Very similar, because out of all of them, it's one of the most similar ones, because it's also, like, secular and stuff like that, and... Yeah, I think about it often. I'm like, I still do believe in God, like... Yeah. I just, you know, so I don't believe in all the rules sometimes. Like, for me, that's the thing that kills me. It's just, like... All the rules, like you really think God is up there watching and being like, hey, as soon as like, you ate the wrong piece of food, fuck, that's it, buddy. You, we lost all hope of your soul. Oh, you cured cancer? Shit, I don't really care. You ate that piece of pork, you're done. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, we do have a lot of rules in Islam, especially in our religion. And I know you're saying, Kat, you guys have a lot. Have a lot of rules too. And, but people are known... Like, the world knows that as a Muslim person, you have a lot of... Like, Muslims have a lot of rules, right? Especially for women. There's, like, a lot more stricter rules than it is for men. Like, it's funny because they'll be like, oh, man can do this, but a woman can't. Like, you know, it's... Which... I'm not getting into it on this, but like yeah, the thing yeah, is that I, like it is I what it is. Not allow me to get into exactly, it. I, I can't. I don't even want to like have to like explain to people like in the comments like what I'm talking about. But it's just 
it's funny that people when people convert i had a friend he converted and i was like hey i hope you know what you're getting yourself into right i'm like you have a lot of community now people are pressuring you to convert but i said the moment you convert you're on your own you think people are gonna come and like be at your aid 24 7 just because you became muslim forget it they they will pre- before like you're saying all your friends are fighting. It's funny because that's true. Well, People will so fight beforehand to, to convert you, yeah. but then after you're converted, like where are they? You won't you won't see them or like you won't like they'll be like, hey, can you take me to the mosque? Yeah, bro, I don't go to the mosque. Like that's you're on your own, man. You want to go? Oh, they'll be like, hey, can you teach me the Quran? Yeah, bro, I don't really know how to read the Quran. Like I just I like I taught. I just don't even read it now. It's like then why are you trying to convert? Their ideologies are in the right place. But well, you, you, let's keep it above. the reason why they're trying to convert you is because there's a law technically that happens if you convert someone, you get all your sins written off. So that's why they technically fight for that spot. No, <laughs> not, you don't get your sins written off. So when you convert, you get your sins yeah, yeah. written off, not them. Well. No, nah, this isn't this isn't like buy one get two for one free. This isn't a this isn't a situation. It's not a two for one special. But when you convert someone, what happens is that a it's you gain sins but there is a two for one special the two for one special is that every good deed that you do from the moment you convert they also get the same so it's every good deed you you lose all your sins delegating you know what it's i mean it's <laughs> it basically for example let's say if i convert I, 10 people and they all do good deeds i don't have to do anything and i get just 10 no, good. <laughs> yes honestly it might work that way but what it says in the hadith is it a pyramid scheme though you know honestly hey like think about scholars they probably like they they're probably like every guy that converts someone when uh, in the masjid you know, like the, he's probably the like the shia yeah shia they're probably like collecting all that just sitting there and sleeping yeah. that's why like okay so like the hadith basically says is that if you i don't know if the hadith are saying i'm not 100 percent sure i'd have to like ask someone don't quote me but what i know for a fact is that like when you convert someone the main aspect of it is your sin the person who converted sins are forgiven and then the person who converted you right mm. and you if you and they teach you something or you start doing something like for example start praying and start becoming a true muslim mm. all your good sins all your good not all your good sins all your good mm. deeds will become will be awarded to him as well mm. on the day of reckoning they will be considered so for example you convert 10 people you're multiplying by 10 every good deed for so like to go pray in congregations so what if you convert someone and they start doing bad deeds you don't get the bad deeds oh, okay. but okay here's the thing though but if you're teaching them the uh they slam the wrong way well, then, then it's on you then you're technically to blame then t- on the day of reckoning you could go to god and be like hey he taught me why are you blaming me? I followed. The, I read the cut. I read the shahada. I read everything I was supposed to do. But your follower, he taught me this. I chose to come to your path. But then it's like, why didn't? Then God could say, why didn't you go seek out someone else if you knew you were doing the wrong? But if you didn't know, then see that's why I think it's. To, let me ask you a question. Do you think? Do you think that like on the day of reckoning, like you know, everyone knows about their yeah, reckoning, yeah. that God will forgive those who didn't weren't Muslim, uh, didn't believe in a religion, that didn't believe in a religion period. Well, they believed, believed in God, but they just didn't follow a religion. So basically, me. Yeah, I would say I believe so. It's called secular. So, uh, what is that called? Uh, if you believe not in not atheist, agnostic. 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 Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Which is you believe in a God, you just don't really care to follow any right. of the rules or any of their religions. I don't know. I'd say so because the way I look at it is like I think God ultimately cares if you're just a good person. Yeah. If you ultimately go out there and you live your life with a good heart at all times and you're always a good person, you're always helping others, you're always giving a hand out, you're doing good things, I don't think he's going to be like, listen, man, shit, I'm sorry, I got to bar you at the door. <laughs> you're not getting in. Like, <laughs> Yeah. L right there, go ahead. I was <laughs> just like, you're that way, not that way. You, you, you come to the cross, you're like, yeah, you know, I did good. I'm, I'm, I'm. Low key at the same time, also, hell looks so much more fun. Because if you think about it, everyone goes to hell. Like all the comedians, all the rock stars. See, that's, <laughs> that's sometimes I think about that at the back. It's like, like I'll wake up at night and be like, oh my God, I don't want to go to hell. You know, I've, I forgot to pray Isha. I got to wake up and like praying in the middle of the night just because like I have that idea that I'm going to go to hell. But I think it's funny to me when, uh, what's your opinion on atheism? Like, like full atheist? Yeah. You don't have to give an opinion. What's your like thought process on it? Yeah. yeah it's, for me, it's just like, okay, yeah, no problem. I, I think I have, I have nothing wrong with atheists. I think they're, I, I, they're amazing people. Like if you, I've met a lot and they're super nice people and it's just sometimes they like to give their value, they, their opinion. Like they want to like, 
I know a guy who wants to change me into the atheist. And I'm like, bro, I'm okay. My thing is that like religion is it on its own thing, right? Yeah. But I just don't, for me personally, I don't want to risk the chance of going when I die and Allah is right. Like there's an angel asking me these three questions, you know, in the grave, the four questions, like who is your rub? You know, where, who is this? Like, they'll show the face of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you don't know. I don't know. That. Yeah, there, there's, three, there's questions. three questions in the grave. And then the angel, and then in that in that aspect, if you can answer them correctly, you will be blessed to s- s- sleep in peace until the day of reckoning. Or if not, then you'll be in, put in a, pay, like, pre-hellfire. Where, like, you, you it's called the azab of the grave. Okay. Basically means the disaster of the grave. And, like, and so you'll sit in... Uh, eternity of pain until the day of reckoning comes. Damn, so basically you're in purgatory. Purgatory. Mm-hmm. Like, I remember, there's, there's some sayings, though, you'll sit in, like, the grave, is like, you're watching, you can see, like, the heaven mm-hmm. from, like, a window will open up and you can kind of, like, look out. Oh, it, like, so you get the window shop into heaven. Oh, damn, that's kind of cruel. So you get the window shop, you get to see all your homies dance and have fun, and you're like, well, well, they wouldn't be there, be right? Forgot. No one be there. Go in there because like you're kind of still dead. Everyone's waiting to go into heaven. No, because I don't think. Because here's the question: like they say that once you're in the grave, you sit in the grave until the day of reckoning. So then, when you die, you don't technically go to heaven or hell. So you're still, still you're sitting in the grave still. Your your soul is still in the grave. So it's like kind of like Jeopardy. Like Jeopardy, right? <laughs> yeah, you're kind of still waiting. Is that not weird? It's a little weird, yeah. Say, oh. Inshallah, you got jungles for those. I'm like, well, he didn't. He's. You have to wait till he's we all dead then, and then but you have to sure. prayer prayer makes sense because like, you pray for them to go to Jannah because you want them to make it once you're but my question is that when you when you guys die like do people in the graves next to each other just sit beside each other and be like hey what's up bro like like I, I don't know it, death is such a weird concept yeah, kinda, yeah. Yeah. do you think about it a lot yeah I would say so yeah. more recently than before um, I've, I've always thought about death heavily like since an early early age like one of my earliest memories is thinking about life after death at the age of four when it should have been nap time but I was just like I don't know couldn't sleep I vividly remember it I was just like what would life look like if I died right now <laughs> yeah Heaven. Heaven or hell, yeah. There's no hell. <laughs> well, I know, but I heard about hell, and I was like, okay, there's consequences. So I was just like, yeah, I was always intrigued by that, and it's just like, but it's such a crazy thing, because he's like, you don't, I don't know, don't fucking touch it. <laughs> Do you think if we taught children nothing until they hit puberty about, like, religious, like, religious aspect, that they'd be, they'd be better off? Like, they're, if we didn't teach them about hell and anything? I think so. I think it's... Religions, the way I look at it, and it's the best way I've heard it explained is by Jordan Peterson, where he's like, religion's a great thing to look at because, particularly the Bible, I know more about the Bible than I know about the Quran. And the Bible is written by no one and written by everyone. I know the Quran's like written by one person, never edited, which is to say it's kind of a cop out because you guys wrote it last. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, it doesn't really matter. That's not the point. But because it's written by no one, but it's written by everyone, you get a piece of everyone writing it. And the way I look at it, Right now, because we're talking earlier how science has advanced us so fucking far. But back then, they didn't really advance that far in science the way we can like go into the atoms, X, Y, and Z. But what you could do is study people. You can study people a lot. And it's known that if you put stuff in stories, people are more willing to absorb it and pass it on, i.e. oral traditions of Aboriginal yeah. people in Canada. And how that storytelling goes for thousands of years. So they, all they did is just write that down and they wrote stories and morals in, in the form of a book. And then they put it as an ultimate judge of someone else as a god. Because yeah. ultimately humans are always going to put a frame of reference to something higher than themselves. We just, yeah. you know. So that's the way I look at the Bible. And I think it's valuable. But if we just teach the morals without the Bible, I don't see why you need it. The Quran came in stories. Yeah, well, they're all stories. That's what I'm saying. It's they're funny. Because stories, stories are the best thing that we can absorb. Like. Is it, is, does God just know that story was it? Like Allah just knew it was like, oh, you know, these humans will only understand through story. Like they need something, some entertaining well, things to. It's an ingenious human that realized he can manipulate people or get him to listen by telling a good story. Isn't that what influencers are? Yeah. And I mean, Realistically? I, I mean, I got mad movies? at my sister when she was younger because yeah. she'd be telling stories and I'm yeah. like, hey, this story's boring. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. get better at articulating yourself. <laughs> it's like when we watch movies, people flood to the cinemas, people flood to all this stuff because they want to go watch a good story yeah because you forget about your life while you're watching a story of someone else 
and you get like the hero's arc you get like all those things and you're like oh wow this is this is enjoyable and you get that elated dopamine feeling as well i think i think author, author should be one of the oldest uh, 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 uh really one of the oldest professions because, because like come on. come on no authors are very new profession which is, which is that's what i'm saying but it should like a storyteller is basically an author so than like shamans or chiefs they should have been storytellers they were basically they storytellers were, they, they weren't anything more than that yeah yeah Realistically, that's Realistically, how they were. They, were. they just they held, just held a, lot a lot of information, information in, their head. Head. in their head, and they're like, and they would. Re- that was indigenous people too, right? The story of Turtle Island, all that stuff, and that was all told by uh, their chiefs. It would be like be passed down on and on. Same thing with our like in the, Qur- the Quran, like it's the stories, right? It's the lessons. Like each le- each story has each each story has a lesson. You kind of have to dig deep into it. It's philosophical. You don't take it word for word for what it is. You're supposed to take what the big or uh, meaning is. But I think every era or every time period has had a different concept of what it means. And if we really want to look into Winnipeg, fuck, 1995 is the last residential school that was closed, which is very recent. That's 28 years ago. So it's like we're not that change and we're still barbaric. We're still like homelessness is on a rise in Winnipeg. I can tell you that. Yeah. And so I'd say we still do teach the stories and like you just want you want to teach good morals. Yeah. Ultimately, that's so I don't know if it has to be in the religious sense, but we learn the same stories. The same stories through uh, it's fun. TV and cartoons and like anime That's for me. Say. Like uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you literally, do you remember reading uh, children's books? Like what's Magic a really famous? The one that I read all the time. The Magic Magic, Magic Treehouse was great. Though. I loved like they were just the novels. Yeah. They were like a, so uh, Ger- Geronimo Stilton. Do you ever read Geronimo ah, Stilton? I love Geronimo Stilton. Yeah. They made, just made an animated series for it. Bones, too. Bones? I just read Amulet. Do you ever read Amulet? I heard about it. I don't think I read it. Bro, I just started rereading it. I'm already on book eight, like the last book. They're re- releasing a new one next year. Nice. Book nine after it's six years. 2018 was when they released one. In grade, when I was grade 11. Okay. Now they're releasing okay. one now. That's like seven years later. I think I know exactly it's, what that is. Now. Bones was great. That used to be my like go-to like comic book. That during reading time when they made you read Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. You just go pick all the novels. How many, how many books wow. did Bones have? Search it up, actually. There's at least the first volume of the Bones follows Foam Bone and his two cousins. Oh, yeah. Phonebulous Bone and Smiley Bone. So when phonies or... Yeah. Campaign for mayor goes wire. Phoenix is run out of their hometown of Boneville. So then they have to cross the desert, finds a hand-drawn map that they use to navigate their way across the fantasy landscape. The cousins are separated by a sea of locusts and individually end up in a mysterious valley. Their journey is made more difficult by the rat creatures that are pursuing them on their travels. Eventually, they joyously reunite at a local tavern called Barnhaven, where they are taken in by a mysterious girl named Thorn and her even more enigmatic godmother. Or grandmother. Foambone is instantly develops a crush on Thorn and repeatedly attempts to express his love through poetry. As they stay longer in the valley, they encounter humans and other creatures who are threatened by a dark entity, the Lord of Locusts. So the bones try to escape to Bone Valley and are quickly drawn into an events and are quickly drawn events around them, compelling them on a hero's journey to help him free the valley. The rest of the series made up of similar quest stories but with varying settings and plot lines. All of the comics maintain the elements of fantasy and humor that Smith employs in, the, employs in Out From Boneville, as well as the intensity of an adventure story. Really? That was kind of useless. So basically yeah. it just sounds like... <laughs> so it's just like uh, The Hobbit. There's nine books. Sounds like Hobbit. Yeah. yeah. The one Hobbit like left with his two uh, fellow friends, and then they Lord were guided by Lord of the Rings. Yeah, yeah. That was not Bilbo. Who was it? Frodo, Frodo, Frodo yes, yeah, Sam, and yeah, I don't remember. Well, we I don't, can't. We don't care about the third one. <laughs> I, we don't. I never was able to. I read the first book, but I never got through the other ones. Dude, I did it just because. Did like, you? Just because, like, I love fantasy books, and I was like, "Fuck, I gotta go through the classics." You yeah. know what I mean? Like, the most boring fucking book of my life. <laughs> oh yeah, the last book, especially where they're like on mortars, and I was yeah. like reading that, and I was falling asleep. Like, I, I vividly remember like fucking the head. <laughs> like, I read the first book and I just could not get through the movies. Right. I the watched. Made a fucking sleep. I don't know how those movies made all of them. How they made three movies and made no, money. They're good though. Like the CGI is baller. Like the at that time, for great. that time maybe. No, even if you look now, come on, it's better than Marvel CGI. Yeah, Marvel just caps out, bro. I got a 
put my time and effort to just sit there and watch it. Yeah. Because I tried. I always fall asleep. I'll, I'll get to the one hour mark. And the next time I'll, like, I'll wake up and I'll, it's ended. I was like, wait, what? It's also, it's like, it's not that fast pace of a story. It's not. It's really slow. It's really slow. It's slow. It's a really slow story. They're trying to add too much detail. There's a lot of detail. The dude, like, JJ or yeah. Tolkien's, he went off on detail. Like, He's the same guy who made Game of Thrones, right? No. No. He made another book series. The Hobbits. And then he made, like, the Soul something. Like, he basically <sighs> made a lot of series or books in... The, in the world of... Lord of the okay. Like, like, That's what it was. Yeah. I didn't... I, I wasn't like, 100% sure. Off topic and started writing the mythologies for that. And, really? And there's a movie about him, like, uh, J.R.R. Tolkien. Yeah. I would recommend. It's really good. It's a very interesting movie. Because it shows his life before he becomes an author. Oh wow! He's a very interesting man. He was in World War Two or World War One. He's World passed away now, right? Yeah, 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 he's been no. dead for a minute. Oh, has he? Okay. Yeah, yeah, at least thirty, forty years. Yeah, wow, that's a while. <laughs> he's been fucking gone, gone. Who made Who made a uh, Game of Thrones? His kids? No, they asked for license. I know his kids don't like the Game of Thrones. Who? J.R. Yeah, J.R. But, but he's the but he's the one who wrote Game of Thrones, right? That's uh, George R. Martin's. That Martin, that's what I'm thinking of. It, it's the same like kind of like title, like their name. It kind of it's just a bunch of dots he and then. Him, I, I believe the R. Like he did the R. R. Oh, okay, okay, that's what I was thinking. Cause the R's in there too, and I'm just like, you know, it was a really good fantasy book. I know this is overrated, but Harry Potter. Fuck yeah. I fucking love Harry Potter. Like exactly. to but this, <laughs> to this day, I like. No, it's like one of the best. The best. I, I honestly want a PlayStation 5 just to play the new Harry The Potter. new one? Yeah, you can play it on PC. My PC shit anyway. Yeah. So I, don't have a PC. I don't know what it was. Like, the idea that I could just escape into a world of magic. I think that's what it was. Dude, right? That's what it was. People's lives are too hard, and they could open up a book and just escape. I watch them. I do Harry Potter Marathon on Halloween every year. I do it during Christmas time. Then, too. I love it during Christmas time. I love it. I, the first three movies are such Christmas oh, movies. They are. And then it gets really fucking dark. Yeah. <laughs> That's like, I like watching the last four in Halloween. That's like Gobble uh, the Fire, Order of Phoenix, uh, the pra- Half Blood Prince, Prince, and then the two Deathly Hallow parts. What's your favorite movie? Out of all Harry Potter. It has to be the first one. I've watched the first one so yeah, many times. It's the fourth one. The Tri Wizard. Tri Wizard. Oh, Order, the, the Order of Fire. Really? Not the Order of Fire. Not the so, Order of Phoenix? No, 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 no. It's called The Goblet of Fire, sorry. Yeah, the the fourth Fire, one. Right. No, the first one, it's just so nostalgic. That's true. Like, it's the, the it's one. the first one was so good to me was because, like, this is Harry. Yeah. He's living this really shitty life. Yeah. He is stuck in a... For anyone that hasn't watched Harry Potter or read it, oh, fuck, I, you have live under a rock. <laughs> because, like... I have yet to meet someone that has not seen Harry Potter. I have met someone. Really? Never seen and never read the books. Just know yeah. what happens because of, like what modern world like everyone talks about it but the fact that this kid you know he's 12 and everyone his family hates him he lives in a cupboard he lives this really shitty life you know he's school nothing's going for him but then you know someone randomly comes out of the the bloom and it's like hey harry you're a wizard like come on man my favorite that baffles me is the whole like with the letters yeah. And you just can't get yeah. one fucking letter, dude. Like, come on, man. <laughs> man like, seriously, you, oh, you know when the letter first came? I would have, and he had to walk through, like, the hallway. I would have slipped underneath my cupboard door. I'm His room was right there, bro. Sure. Like, he didn't have to walk his letter. I think he was more surprised that he ever even seen a letter with his name. And then he just didn't really realize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he didn't know what he would do. He didn't know what his uncle was going to do. Well, what the fuck was he going to do when he opened the It was the Dudley. Wizard be like, okay, well, Dudley, Dudley's the one who grabbed her, right? Oh, my God. Harry got a letter. Harry. Who would be writing to Harry? That was Mr. Dudley, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who would be writing to you? Your peasant boy. Yeah. I feel like I could they do it. Good... Like they did. I think I could do a good Mr. Dudley. Who? Who would be writing to you? I feel like... Mrs. Dudley. Oh, my God. Dude, you know there was like a whole like different cut scene or I don't know what it was, but the where they said uh Mrs. Dun- you know what video I have stuck in my head? What's that? The one that's like the spoof where it's like, Harry, you're a wizard. Harry, you're a wizard. <laughs> but Hagrid, I'm just Harry. <laughs> Listen here, Harry. Oh, that you're, was, uh, yeah. you're gonna go to fucking Hogwarts and you're gonna do wizard shit and you're gonna fucking love it. Oh. But Hagrid, you fat fucking oaf. I'm just Harry. <laughs> <laughs> Shit lives rent free in my head. That's so no, Harry Harry Potter to will always live in my mind rent free. Um, 
I I understand where he comes from. Like I get it. Who? Harry. Like I understand. Like every child felt like that at one point. Oh, yeah. per- Percy Jackson. Come on, the same best. shit. The best. They're making a new TV series for I Percy Jackson. Fucking... I hope it's good. I hope so. Uh, Disney Plus. Disney's making it. They'll ruin it, but it'll be okay. It'll, at least I think that's what Lord of the Rings should have been. A TV series. They did? There's a TV series? Oh, yes, there is, though. But that was before The Fellowship of the Ring. That's like, yeah, before. But it was really good. Bro, $1 billion is what they spent on that. It was really good. But I'm it, watching the Wheel it, of Time series. I actually have to do you go. like it? Pretty good. I read the books. The books were fucking... Really? Okay. Now, if you're ever going to read the books, they're also like 900 page. Oh, wow. Books. They're fucking hefty yeah. books. The first six books are pretty good. And then fuck the next like four books. And then skip to the end, the last three. Wow. Oh. Because that, that's... Because the... He just the author at one point just started dragging the fucking story out like it's like a lot. Tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, that's nuts. No, I loved, I loved. Uh, yeah, Percy Jackson's great. Mm-hmm. And again, same concept story. I feel like at that time everyone was just copying the same storyline. He was the same way. He was another lonely kid who felt left out of place because he came from a single mom, mm-hmm. and at the point where he didn't know what was wrong with him. Because he could do stuff other people couldn't do and stuff. And then he gets sent off to camp. Hey, well, imagine imagine a half man, half goat shows up to you and is like, hey, kid, like, or like. He was getting hunted down, too. He was, but it was like the first scene where he fights the monster, right? And then in the library scene, like when they're at that ancient museum and then his, uh, then his, uh, what's his called? His teacher is a centaur. And then his uh, best friend is a goat, Grover. Yeah. Come on, man. That's yeah. mad. And then you're told, hey, by the way, uh, your father's Neptune. Neptune who? The son, of the god of water. Like, yeah. come on. Like, you're just like, what the fuck are you on, bro? That was the shit, though. I remember growing up as a kid. I was like, Poseidon. Like, you know what I mean? If I could- Poseidon was my guy, bro. I was like, if my dad could anyway, it better be fucking Poseidon. I hate his Zeus. You know, I wanted to be Zeus a little bit too, but I wanted Poseidon was that one person who wasn't like the most popular. Like I felt like not everyone because if you said Zeus, popular as fuck. Yeah, but because if you said Zeus, everyone would be like, "Oh, you're just power hungry." Uh, but if you said like Hades, you're just like you're weird. Yeah, fuck, yeah, why you yeah, want yeah. it? But if you said like Poseidon, if, if Poseidon you're like, okay, cool, you like water, like whatever, that's cool. Wow, the whole world is water. That's like Atlantis, like king of uh, Aquaman. I was gonna just ask you that. Do you believe in it? I think so. I think Atlantis exists. I think Atlantis. it did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. An underdog. Fuck yeah. It's the idea that like like One Piece. Have you watched One Piece yet? Yeah. Oh, yeah. What what is One Piece? He is a child, a man, a kid who sets out on a journey. Naruto, a kid that sets out on, on a journey. Like most of the most popular TV shows or anything, Goodwill Hunting, a kid who just like miraculously is a genius. Like you know what I mean? The union kid. Everyone just loves one one person who has nothing. Nothing to him, and then somehow makes it. Yeah, because you can relate to it. Because every one of us, are, yeah, because I mean, look at me and you. Realistically, we're not yeah. successful at all. I'm fucking broke as shit. Yeah. <laughs> I got a flat of student loans, and I'm like, ah. <laughs> so, and you see the stories of someone like doing something and accomplishing and reaching a goal and becoming a hero, and you're like, fuck, we all want that. We all want to be welcomed. We all want to be appreciated. Yeah. Especially as dudes, like, we don't get compliments. We don't get fuck all. Resilience. What's your like as 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 we're wrapping it up? Like, what's your whole like concept of like your belief in resilience? Well, really, it's my tattoo that I have on me, the plus one percent, where the attitude of make today better than yesterday by one percent, which means that no matter how shitty it gets, you're just like fuck. Gotta just do one step. Like, if that's all it is today, fuck it. It's one step, but at least you did something. Right. So that's really it. That's my concept of resilience. After all after well, a lot more that I could talk about but rather choose not to yeah. that I've seen of being an immigrant and our upbringing and like just yeah the isolation of that and the difficulties with that and let's not forget the language barriers that happen and also the switch in mentalities with the languages like that's a yeah there's a lot so yeah. really for me it's summarized down to just that one thing that's why I tattooed it to myself because I was like fuck it like just to remember like because <laughs> yeah it's yeah you can get swept away in a lot of shit yeah. But uh, Drakic, thanks for coming, man. It was really fun. We had a lot of technical issues, but I appreciate it. We're-